Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Good morning, good evening. We're aware that there's attendees from around the world, so thank you for investing time at whatever time of day it is where you are right now. Just like to take this opportunity to, to introduce ourselves and thank again everyone for coming on board. It will be a, a very interactive session, interactive forum, and the, the, the subject is myth busting, the truth about VCI. So we are assured that each one that has joined today will go away with, with added knowledge and that, in, that includes us. Remember one of my technical friends telling me some years ago, he said Australia really has a void, a technology void in that space of corrosion protection. And today we're setting about bridging that gap. So wherever we are today, whatever that status is today, at the end of the session, we'd like to believe that each one of us walks away with, with more knowledge. You might say bridging that gap, whatever that gap is, that's our goal. So today's speakers, I'm one of them, Gary Menzies, Director at Daywalk. Joining me is Mr. JJ Nasker, who is an independent corrosion and preservation expert. He's a metallurgist. JJ, you might like to say a few words, just introduce yourself. Hello. Hello, everyone. My first name is Jagat Jyoti, and last name is Nasker. But my well wishers call me by a short and sweet name, JJ. Last 24 years, almost on everyday basis, I have been learning on corrosion and preservation issues, studying the numerous applications across various industrial sectors like oil and gas, defense, power sectors, mining, steel and automobile, etc. Mainly to resolve the corrosion and preservation issues. Rather, I should say that uh, to achieve the zero corrosion in this engineering industry. I'm sure today's session will be very interactive and uh, useful to all of us. Now I look forward for uh, Gary to start the session, please. Thank you, JJ. Thank you. So what we have on the screen now is the scientific equation of what happens when iron interacts with water. JJ, you might like to just say a few words, just a very quick overview of what this what this means to us yeah i would i would uh, give a definition of corrosion in a layman level what we understand is at mining stage the metal is available in the form of its ores and oxides we call it oxides from oxides of a metal we do the extraction process and get the metal now this metal would love to go back to the original stage from where it has come so this reverse journey of a metal back to oxide we call it as a corrosion now to make it clear about this particular uh, uh, equation you can see this ferrous metal with the interference of moisture on the surface you get a ferrosulfuric oxide which is nothing but a rust and what you see the hydrogen that gas doesn't stay on the surface of the metal so what you see on the metal surface is ferrosulfuric oxide which is rust or corrosion and the difference between rust and corrosion is uh, rust is meant for only ferrous and corrosion is meant for ferrous and non-ferrous both. So if corrosion is a set, rust is only a subset of it. That's very well put, thank you. So really what we're saying is corrosion equals oxidation. We'll move forward to the next slide. So we have a video to play. Before we play it, just would like to give a little bit of framing. What is VCI? So VCI stands for Volatile Corrosion Inhibitor or vapor corrosion inhibitor. In the industry, you might hear also, so in, in addition to VCI, you might hear of VPCI, which is vapor phase corrosion inhibitor, or VPI, vapor phase inhibitor. And really what it is, it's all, you might say it's all one set, it's all in that space of volatile corrosion inhibitors. It's really, I guess what we're saying today, it's that, it's that area of a proactive rust protection technology. So we'll play this brief video. So where Daywalk is really playing a role in proactive rust prevention, or you could say proactive corrosion prevention, is in a whole system. So it's because yes, there's, you might say, progressive VCI technology, which forms part of the overall Daywalk preservation system, which includes the skin protection. So that eliminates, it removes the oxygen from the surface. And it is an overall 
outer protection, and then there's inner protection, there's void fills. The beauty of VCI is that it can be used in oils, can be used in papers, can be used in outer wraps. And I use those words carefully because outer wraps could be, let's say, the, the terminology of plastic, but it can be non-plastic based product. It can be foils, it can be canvas, it can be PVCs. So really what we're saying is it can move right away from the space of plastic, which we are finding in the market, there's more and more call for a movement away from. We've had a lot of feedback from industry as to the cost of applying heat shrink plastic. And while we do a lot of plastic and that, that continues to be something which the industry uses looking forward, there are significant cost savings in providing a reusable type cover or bag, whatever that looks like which can be literally, either the item can be lowered into it or the bag can be put over the top. And then we can give you the guarantee that there's gonna be no rust because of you know our focus on the system, making sure that bare metal surfaces, as you say, with the skin is covered and we've got desiccant in there, moisture control happening. From a, um, a CBA, cost benefit analysis perspective, the whole process, the whole proactive, I use that word again, proactive preservation, is saving the industry millions of dollars. Thank you. What we'd like to do now is run a quick poll. We want you to help us just by answering one quick question. So I guess 15 seconds. If everyone can just click on either, I've never heard of VCI. I've heard of VCI a few times. I hear about VCI quite regularly, or I use VCI products in my job all the time. Thank you very much for that. Thanks for your participation. So today, as we say, that the forum is about myth busting, but before we actually track into that part of it, we'd just like to provide some context to this conversation. If you joined our previous webinar, which was specifically about the, the skin, the skin area, the skin methodology, you would have heard about that whole preservation methodology. But what, the way we look at it is we look at it as a one-third, one-third, one-third. So you could say, I might do the best job of the outer cover, or I might do everything about coating the shaft. But it's actually, there's three distinct contributors. The first one in that, you might say, preservation success story is removing the rust and preventing rust. So that's on the shaft, on that flange, on that bare metal surface. There could be spores of rust that have been there from, you might say, an earlier part of the process where it was cutting, machining, whatever it might be. So the importance of removing any rust, that could be by means of a, a zero grade emery paper, it could be a solvent based cleaner, and then it can be actually coating that with the likes of a VCI gel, a product such as skin. So making sure that the, the presence of rust is kept to an absolute, you might say, zero. The second one is the actual atmospheric conditioning. So that's preserving, protecting, conditioning the atmosphere within that package. And that is done by means, again, in this case of VCI, it could be a VCI desiccant, but it could be a product like this where it's a desiccant, but it has a VCI impregnated. It could be a VCI powder. It can even be the VCI that's been impregnated into paper, into foil, into an, a cover, whatever it might be. I have with me here, a massive reusable cover. So that is a VCI technology that has been impregnated into a reusable cover. So that is, there is that VCI conditioning the atmosphere. The outer, the ceiling of the outer, that's the importance of having that actual closed nucleus. So rather than just shower capping a cover over a product, the importance of actually encapsulating in a complete nucleus. That's that third, third, third technology. JJ, you might like to jump in here and just give a, a couple of comments to endorse it. Yeah, I would like to uh, emphasize on the long-term preservation and moth bowling. I think all of us heard about it. See, moth is basically a silkworm. You know, silkworm, that's an insect, you know, that removes the saliva and that gets solidified and it forms a cocoon, it forms an outer cell. Thereby, this moth is gets protected from the harsh environment. To protect its own body from the harsh environment, it forms the cocooning by itself. So this concept is first seen by US Army scientists and they call it as moth bowling. Now this moth bowling is very, very important to understand the long-term preservations. Couple of applications, if I tell you, it will be very easy to understand immediately. 
like in case of defense the armaments will be used only when the war starts but till then it needs to be protected so it is not known the duration it can be one month it can be two month it can be couple of years it can be up to 25 years so scientists in fact in day work engineers scientists have designed the vci for long term preservation as long as 25 years it can achieve the long term preservation or the moth bowling concept and now in covid situation you might have seen that a lot of machineries are a lot of layoff is there the entire plant is under layoff conditions under such conditions you need to protect the machineries you need to protect the entire plant there therefore the importance of long term preservation and moth bowling has been understood in totality by the engineering industries and i'm sure the session further is going to be very very useful in terms of learning these aspects thank you jj so this is a question we often ask whoever it might be it could be you know what's the status that could be a preservation manager at a mine it could be a production manager at a steel mill it could be operations manager at engineering works what is the status and this is this is a very important part to get that understanding because there are so many factors in that preservation or you might say in that corrosion process how are we going to get to where we've got to go the first part is to be able to articulate what is the status jj you might just like to jump in here and speak about some of the the factors that cause that accelerated yeah i, yeah, I would like to emphasize on certain accelerating factors that actually leads to corrosion the first thing is with the relative humidity it it is more than 70% accelerates corrosion and you know the fluctuations in the temperature in humid conditions too gives you a lot of corrosion issues and we might be using in the industries a lot of weight wood cotton boxes paper if these weight wood cotton boxes and paper if this comes in direct contact with the uh, metal surfaces in fact even if it comes in contact directly with the painted surfaces you can have a severe corrosion issues in the industries dust dirt impurities too can give you a lot of corrosion problems and when we do a lot of machining in the industries you might have seen that we use a lot of coolant so you might have observed on the cast surfaces castings you see a lot of coolant spot or rather you see a lot of stain mark on the finely machined surfaces this eventually leads to corrosion so these are all the couple of accelerating accelerating factors that i i want to tell in fact it's a very vast subject but i think this is in nutshell to tell that a few important aspects which we need to look into to resolve the corrosion prob uh, problem uh, in the working process wip stage thank you thanks jj so we're going to run another poll now how do you rate your rust prevention challenges so we just give it give 20 to 30 seconds of major challenges i've quite a few challenges i only have minor challenges i don't have any challenges so what we find in that question what is the status and let's say you've 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 shared it with us there there's probably three main bits of feedback three main pain points those three words uncertainty frustration and fear it's really the uncertainty about how to effectively preserve equipment it's that frustration when expensive equipment rusts because of damage to barrier films you can see in that picture there the product has been torn or cut and once that barrier has cut, let's say with some of the other technology, there's major issues with, with rust, with moisture ingress and, and rust that eventuates. And then it's the fear that resources being put into preservation will not work. How do I know that what I'm going to do, what I'm going to invest, time, money, expertise, labor, is actually going to be successful? So where do we need to get to? What's the, what's the end goal? You know, we've, we've spoken about the status quo. Where's the end goal? Where are, we, where are we aiming for? I remember being um, just back to that fear of even that side of being fearful and, and even angry. I remember being at a site in Australia in Worsley Illumina in Collie, just south of Perth. And there were these two huge enclosures, these two, I'm not sure what they were, transformers, very large bits of equipment that had been completely encapsulated. Um, and there was obviously some ingress of moisture there'd been some holes some slicing some damage to the outer cover and this guy was you could say fit to punch he was like we've paid i think it was something like forty thousand bucks per enclosure and how on earth has it happened there's rust in here and he was told by the supplier that there was some there was some form of hole there was some break to that barrier now from that time till you know years that ensued 
I, I asked many metallurgists, many corrosion experts, why that didn't work and why why technology does and why some doesn't. And and today is about actually sharing some of that with you because for me it was it was a real scary moment to know that someone had invested eighty thousand dollars in the cover alone only to find there was failure. That was not VCI technology. That was one of the other. I think it might have been the, the copper-based technology. So it was one of understanding why, asking the question in an unbiased way. I guess what we know in this space, where do we need to get to? We're all in this space and we've had the pole back. It's, it's, a, it's, a tough, it's a tough gig. You get this expensive equipment arriving. You can feel the pressure. You can feel that weight in your shoulders. Hey, this is my baby. I'm the corrosion expert here. I'm the metallurgist. I'm the preservation engineer. I've got to make sure this is right. This is perfect for when it's called for by operations. So where do we need to get to? It is in that space of effective preservation technology. And VCIs we've already covered off stands for volatile corrosion inhibitors. It is a rust preventive technology. And I'd like to, I'd love to use the word, it's a proactive technology. And, and we know the costs that are, you might say, that have to be made, that have to be put in when you are doing a rework, a remedial side. Proactive technology saves huge amounts. The investment in proactive is a fraction of that cost of when you have to rework, remachine, recoat. You might say, make good again. It is used, as JJ already said, used extensively in steel, metal industries, automobile, oil and gas, just to name a few. You can read them there, mining, power, and of course, defense. It's a, it's a you might say, it, it touches every industry and it touches every part of the globe. There's obviously certain parts, some of the industries, some of the geographies that are more affected by others, but you find corrosion never sleeps and it doesn't leave any part of the globe alone. It's really VCI is used in that space of world-class rust prevention applications. For instance, I know one of the areas where VCI is used is in GE for their massive turbines. So it is used in world-class applications, as a, as a number of you would already know. So now we come to the exciting part, ladies and gentlemen. This is really that part of, hey, let's do some myth busting. Let's feed back some of the myths that we have been, that we've heard, that you've perhaps heard, and let's, let's bust those myths, let's move forward, but not just what we say, but actually, you might say, share with you the, the proof that they're not correct. So myth number one, VCI is unsafe. Well, we can certainly assure you, I can tell you, but we can also obviously back that up with the, the safety data sheets, etc. Modern day VCI is non-toxic and is absolutely safe for the environment. The myth perhaps came from originally back in just post-World War II, when some of the very early versions of VCI, there was some less safe VCI technology or VCI um, formulations used. Daywalk VCI is independently certified and conforms to both REACH and ROHS. So from a safety perspective, it's absolutely, you might say it gets that green tick. JJ, you please jump in here. Yeah, I, I I would like to add up here that uh, Daywalk VCI is, you know, VCI is basically these chemicals come from a salt family and salt is nothing but the table salt we every day consume, which is sodium chloride. Now, if you see the LD50 value, LD50 stands for lethal dose 50%. If you see the LD50 value for sodium chloride is around 3000 milligram per kilo, whereas uh, the VCI is designed by uh, Daywalk close to around 2300 milligrams vis-a-vis -vis in the market you get a lot of unsafe vcis those are the value of ld50 value of those may fall even less than 200 that's very very dangerous so what i would like to say that they work uh, they do care for the environment and the people and it uh, the products which has been designed is user friendly and eco-friendly absolutely i can vouch for it i can vouch for it Thank you, JJ. That's that's fantastic. So we'll move to myth number two. Myth number two, we've heard perhaps some some sites, some some people in the industry saying VCI technology is inferior. And I really love this myth. I love the myth busting of this specific myth. 
because it's been scientifically proven BCR is effective because it gets dissolved in the moisture. So speaking very simply, you might have a VCI, um, a VCI source, whether it's a VCI foil, it could be, as I said earlier, a VCI cover, it could be a VCI bag of desiccant, whatever it is, the VCI source, the VCI migrates from that source through the, the atmosphere within that, that nucleus, and it actually dissolves in the water molecules and forms a monomolecular layer on the steel surface. So it is, it is absolutely, it's, it's extremely superior because it not only, you might say, coexists with the moisture, but it deals with the moisture. It, furthermore, it harnesses the moisture inside that package to make that rust-free surface. Number two, let's say from a factor perspective, it's self-replenishing and, and rehealing. So if there is anything that you might say, for some reason, disturbs that, that monomolecular layer, which you can see represented by those positive and negative orange ions on the, in, the, in the schematic there. If anything does disturb that, further ions are actually brought from that VCI source to the steel surface. And this is very, very important. Unlike certain um, barrier films, once, once the barrier has been cut, there is no way of protecting. So VCI is absolutely more than a barrier film because it has this actual technology which brings the ions from the VCI source to the steel surface. And really it is, I guess, we, we're repeating ourselves here, but it's a system that works. It's specially designed. It's a high performing master batch, which gives full proof protection through an integrated approach. And there's been zero claims to date. So it is a whole end to end solution. The third myth is VCI is only for oils. And we, we've come across this before. You sometimes hear in the industry, yeah, we'll just use a VCR, a VSI additive for our, our sump, but we won't use it for the outer. Well, the beauty of VCI is that it is absolutely able to be used in multiple mediums. So we've spoken about the outer wraps, whether that's a plastic or a foil. Um, this is not today's conversation, but even if it isn't a biocompostable, so you might say a very environmentally friendly product. It can be used in reusable covers, whatever that is, absolutely in that space. But furthermore, it can be used in papers, in desiccants, in VCI powders, and in is it can be used in multiple applications, as you can see in the, the drawings. JJ, you might like to add something there. Yeah, I would like to add up here a couple of critical applications. Like if you take an example in power sectors, use a lot of boiler tubes and that comes with the end cap. But inside the boiler tubes, the structural design says you cannot do any painting. You can't do any coatings. You cannot use any other preservative materials. But VCI has got an answer to that for a long term preservation, even up to 10 years. There is VCI tablet, which you need to insert inside and it comes with the end cap and it gives a fantastic preservation up to the desired period. Now, a couple of more applications like when you want to uh, keep a uh, critical space or you know equipments like engine, compressor, gearboxes. That time it is not filled with gear oil or it is not filled with compressor oil and engine oil. So you drain out the whole thing and then you need to preserve. For the internal preservations, if you inject the VCI additives inside, that takes care of long, long term preservation for the internals. In fact, for the steel industries, if you are able to see this, for the steel industries, you know, we make the, it, is in, it comes in the form of a coil. So if the VCIs are used at the edges and on the outer surface, because of the VCI ionic action, the vapor ionic action, it goes through the lappings and does the protections all over. These kind of applications, it's only possible through VCIs. In fact, for the electronic industries, uh, there is a requirement of anti-static film that is possible again with VCIs. There are a whole lot of applications like electronic industries, electrical industries. Uh, most of the industries where, you know, most of the applications wherein scientists cannot think of anything else to use, VCIs comes with the answers. Fantastic, JJ. Thank you very much. So really what we're saying is it's not just, certainly not just used in oils, it's used in multi-mediums, whether that's the outer, whether it's the void, fill area, you might say the conditioning of the atmosphere, or whether it's something that is applied direct to those bare metal surfaces, it is used 
or you might say subsurfaces like a sump, it is used in a, the applications are extremely broad. Unlike some of the, what we might call barrier films, which could be just a PVC cover, it might be a copper-based technology which is bound in the plastic itself. BCI, because of its migration, you might say it's that hyperactive kid that continues to migrate from the VCI source to the steel surface. That is what gives it its absolute its edge. It is, it is a superior technology. So now we have a, a bit of fun. We're going to just migrate to the whiteboard. JJ is going to tell us a story and I'm going to draw on the whiteboard. And we're just going to, you might say, illustrate how VCI works and why it is effective. So the floor is yours, JJ. So you want me to tell a small story about it? I That'd think we, we should target for uh, Olympic Games. Let us go to Olympic Games. When's the next set of Olympic Games happening, JJ? It was supposed to be 2020, but now due to COVID-19, I think it is postponed to 21. You may correct it further. Yeah, and uh, we will choose the event 100-meter uh, sprint. That is more interesting. So did you say involved or who's running this year? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So in the 100 meter sprint, in the 100 meter space, you have a beginning point at the finishing point. So at the finishing stage, I want you to, Gary, I want you to draw the metal because at the finishing stage, the metal is supposed to be. And, uh, and now we'll go to the contestant. So I will be choosing four strong contestants, very strong contestants. The first contestant will be moisture. That is H2O. My second strongest contestant will be oxygen, that is O2. I would choose my third contestant, that is hydrogen sulfide H2S. And of course, uh, Devak will put their best contestant, which is VCI, Devak VCI. And now I think we should start the race or what do you say? So on your marks, get set, go. Yeah, and if the if the race starts, you'll see that Devak VCI, because of the higher attraction, Devak VCI reaches the metal surface faster. In fact, it is the first test. So at, as Gary says, this is going to be the ocean bold. It's the first test runner, VCI, replacing everything. And in this case, we need to consider that metal is absolutely dry. There is no moisture on the metal in the first case, in this case. So I want you to tell, if you allow me, I want you to go to the second small story, if you don't mind. Okay, yeah, because I wanted to ask you what happens, I mean, this is all very well. You've showed us in a situation where there's just metal, but I've got a situation, a lot of our customers got a situation where they're saying, yeah, that's all very well, but I've already got moisture. So can you help us about that, JJ? Yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm going to that actually. I, that's why I wanted to, Tell you the second story. Can Fantastic. you draw the second one, please? Certainly. Here, you can draw the metal surface, maybe a larger piece of metal you can draw. And you can show a macro moisture on the metal surface. This is H2O. Yeah. And then you can keep a source of VCI somewhere in the corner. Oh, that's great. Yeah, and now, uh, as I've told you that VCI is going to come faster because of the higher affinity of the electronic bond. So it reaches the metal surface. Now your question is, Gary, that even if already moisture is there, so this VCI is going to get dissolved in the moisture, just like how a sugar gets dissolved in the water. It is going to get dissolved in the moisture. And after some time at room temperature, the moisture gets evaporated. And you have only the VCI. Yeah, you are right. You need to draw another metal surface, and you show only the only the mono mono ionic or mono molecular layer of VCI. That is only going to be present because moisture gets vanished. Moisture gets evaporated at the room temperature, and that's how you get the uh, protection. And this protective layer is basically a barrier between the metal surface and the atmosphere. I Thank hope you, I, answered your, I hope you I have answered your query, Gary. That's really good. That's so I guess the two little illustrations that you helped us with here, one was in a situation where we had 
dry metal to start with. And you might say that race, well, VCI is the fastest and it's the most powerful runner. It gets and protects that, that steel surface. In this situation, diagram number two, it is where there's already moisture. What it does is the VCI, you might say, it's almost, it's a bit pushy, isn't it? It actually dissolves itself in the H2O and it forms that monomolecular. It actually harnesses the moisture and be, makes it its servant. Thank you. Yeah, yeah, that's, that was a really good. But wonderfully you have drawn. Wonderfully, it's simplest, but it is nice, nice. Thank you, thank you, thank you. thanks for your help. All right, well, now we'll move to the next point. And really, you might say, we've, we've given you quite a bit of the, the theory, the science, you might say a, a classroom story and, and, and examples and illustrations. It's about knowing the frontline needs. It's, it's really that, how do we put this into practice in real life? Because we realize that the, all the team on the forum today are involved in real life corrosion challenges. And one of the things that we, we look at is that whole lifestyle life cycle protection. It's protecting your assets through the, the whole of their lifetime. JJ, you might like to say something now just on that space of, of life cycle protection. So I, would, I would like to, I'd like to choose a component like a gearbox. Okay. Now for a gearbox manufacturer, right, starting from the sourcing of the metal, which comes from the steel industries and you do a lot of machining and then finally come out with the product, which is gearbox. So this whole journey during the working process, we, uh, the day work engineers study the process. It need not be necessarily that we need to visit the plant, but even nowadays with online, these problems can be solved. In fact, by seeing the color of the rust at different stages, we can really get into the grassroots level with the kind of expertise that we have. And then we find out the life cycle. The life cycle of the product stands right from the raw material stage till the dispatch section. But in the packaging, whenever the rust happens, most of the times we tend to tend to blame the packaging guy. But what happens is if the component is already rusted before, if the grassroots level is somewhere else, we need to find out and, and arrest the problem at that stage. So that's why we call it as a life cycle protection. And when it comes to the packaging, it's absolutely free from rust. And then we should go ahead with the packaging for long-term preservation. I think uh, you may say something on that. That's good, JJ. So really what we're saying is we've seen the science. This is the real life challenge. And as you say, that, that full through, through life cycle protection. So it could be, as you say, a gearbox. It could be a build of steel. It could be that first process where the, where the knife cuts the steel and there's a cutting fluid. Are there spores of rust? Is that, are there impurities there? And that follows right the way through. So rust can happen way up. The cycle way before it actually manifests itself. The next space we've got there, which we'd just like to touch on, is that adequate dosage. So it's very important when we talk in VCI, when we're talking corrosion, to have an understanding of the right amount, the right, you might say, right proportions to put of VCI for that job. Because VCI can be used for a protection of one month, two months, three months, but it can be used for multiple years, 25 years. So in that space, we often use the analogy, it looks like everyone's feeling a bit hungry. We've got a beautiful succulent looking pizza. Um, this pizza makes me hungry, it makes me hungry. <laughs> <laughs> it looks like, I'm not sure that's seven pieces or eight, I can't count real fast, one, two, three, it looks like seven. We've got seven pieces of pizza. And just imagine we've got seven in the room. Everyone will get one piece. I mean, that's probably not enough, but hey, everyone will be sufficiently fed. All of a sudden, we bring a hundred people into the room. We've only still got one pizza, seven pieces of pizza. Buddy, I know someone's gonna, there might be the polite one that gives it over, but we know there's gonna be a lot of hungry people. So that's what we talk, that's it. A very simple illustration about the dosage. If you need one month of preservation, you might say a small percentage is quite sufficient. If you're needing 25 years of protection, in this case, one pizza is not enough. So one, you might say a simple dosage of VCI is not enough. It needs to be upped. The levels of dosage and the number of VCI sources within our package absolutely have to be matched for that space. You might like to add that, JJ? Yeah, what I would like to add here is uh, that VCI works within the enclosure, enclosed surface. 
it works in the fundamentals of volume that means you need to calculate the volume and then decide the dosage of the bca that is one aspect of it the second aspect of it is you need to see the the amount of uh, metal surface that is exposed that is that requires preservation like if you have a one gear box you need some kind of a dosage if you have millions of small small pins inside the enclosure you need a different kind of preservation level because the surface area increases so there are two aspect i repeat one is the surface area second one is the volume and then third as you have rightly said that the number of the production period that you decide whether it is short term medium term or long term based on these three aspects the day work engineers scientists design the vci dosage and that is where with the success story of day work is thanks jay jay i think i've answered your query yeah absolutely that's fantastic and and that's a very that's a very important part so there's the volumetric space of the enclosure but as you said it might be metal pins another example it could be hundreds of flanges inside that enclosure well the metal surface of that the bare metal exposed metal surface is it's huge compared to if you just have one gearbox which might have a shaft or a flange or a, a machine mountain surface so it is those two factors are extremely critical to get that understanding and you might say use the dosage accordingly thank you so here we have a, a simple test this was not a you might say a nata approved test we can share that with with um, people on this forum as required or as requested but this was a simple nine month test done you might say just simply in the weather we've got these small coupons of flat mild steel roughly two inches square the first one was done just bare metal as you can see the second one was we call them multix bags so just a simple sandwich bag no uv no extra protection so just a basic food bag if you like the third one was done in uv plastic and the fourth was in a uv with the vcr technology impregnated in it was incredibly insightful very enlightening rather um, at the end of nine months and this was left out in the weather so there was rain there was sun it was cold there was hot there was dust you might say every element was there and was exposed those four were exposed to all all of those the hypotheses or some of the hypotheses that we we had proved quite we were quite wrong what we expect and what actually happened so the first one i guess you say we expected to rust and indeed it did rust there was no outer protection at the start and at the end it was rusted number two the multix or zip seal type bag just a basic non-uv stabilized the plastic had disintegrated in fact disappeared and again we had a rusted surface the third was the worst my hypothesis i didn't i didn't realize how bad it was going to be it was literally stewed and this brings up that that subject of mvtr or wvtr so the moisture vapor transmission rate where plastic as i'm sure everyone probably knows ldp it breathes so it allows air in with the air comes moisture and once that moisture was inside that package there was nothing in that plastic to deal with the moisture it looked like that steel had literally been stewed number four as we can see was still shiny metal so again ldp admits air and with that the wvtr the water vapor transmission or the moisture vapor it comes in as well but with the vcr technology it harnesses the moisture as we said already it dissolves in the moisture and that and creates that mono molecular layer so after nine months you had a shiny surface so incredibly um you might say very very clear in the in the outcomes one two three and four it, it was no it wasn't hard to guess which way to go this is a good practical trial thank which, you uh, which witnesses all the weather weather conditions yeah it's it's good trial yeah practical trial fantastic so what we're going to do now is we're just going to um allow we will actually unmute so anyone that chooses or allow to talk i think it's called but anyone that chooses to ask a question audibly is free to do so or make a comment or you can chat a question and i think there are a few questions that we have prior to the session but we'd like to make way for anyone that would like to ask a question see what are those questions from
Go for it, Simon. We'd like to make way for you. Thank you for joining us from the UK. Uh, good morning. Good to hear you. Oh, good. You can hear me. That's always a, a bonus. Yeah. Um, so you, you've talked a lot about uh, rust, you know, ferrous oxide. But what about other materials, you know, um, brasses and uh, the lower grade stainless steels and that? Fantastic question, Simon. And I'd like to get Jay to answer that. That's that's a very so as you say, we've we've spoken a lot about rust, and you might say in that space of the ferrous metals. What about corrosion? What about the non-ferrous metal space? JJ, thought you'd like to jump in and give Simon some comments. Yeah, uh, uh, he made a mention about uh, uh, stainless steel. I'll tell you, in stainless steel, you have 10% chromium. That is why stainless steel gives you a, a better corrosion protection than the steel. And uh, between the steel and castings, if you see steel is having less than 2% of carbon percent. Steel is nothing but the iron and carbon mixture. And uh, you have more than 2% carbon when we call it cast iron. So steel and uh, between steel and stainless steel, you have a better preservation when you get in terms of stainless steel. But these products do get into a lot of corrosion. That's why we say that corrosion is nothing but oxidation. Oxidation can happen not only to ferrous metal, it can happen to anything. You also made a mention about brass. In case of brass, you can see that it is a copper and zinc alloy, basically. Okay, so in that case also, copper do get tarnished. You get a you get a greenish color of oxidation layer on the surface. So corrosion is inevitable in presence of moisture, in humid conditions, and there are certain accelerating factors which I was mentioning can aggravate the situations and you can have the corrosions. But in fact, the solutions which we can offer case to case basis, if you can bring out the cases, we can we have the ready made solutions which you can offer it to you even for your non-ferrous metals as well. So what we're saying, JJ, is that VCI works for ferrous and non-ferrous metals, correct? Correct. Does that answer your question, Simon? Yeah, yeah, sure. Thank, thank you for the input. Gary, were you going to say something? Um, no, I, I didn't really have a question. Uh, um, we may have discussed this earlier, uh, uh, Gary. Uh, can you hear me okay? Yeah, perfectly, Gary. Yep, absolutely. Yeah, the, the application that I'm looking for is basically a stretch film. Uh, a roll. Currently, we have rolls of stretch film in um, uh, in uh, that we wrap our um, steel coils in. Yes. Um, do you have a, uh, a like product or, or, or not? Absolutely. So JJ, we can, we can answer there. So Gary comes from the, the steel, steel industry and yeah. absolutely we do have VCI or UV with VCI stretch, stretch film, both in hand and machine type roles. Is that fair to say, JJ? Yeah, it is clear, but I would like to add up that in case of steel industries, mostly you have corrosion issues with CR steel, cold roll cold roll products, okay? There you have a lot of problems. Generally at the edges, you have a lot of problems once the coiling is done at the edges because edges you cut it. So wherever you cut it, that area acts act as an anode and the rest of the area act as a cathode. So there is a potential difference. In presence of moisture, you have severe corrosion issues with shear coils. So to get rid of that, generally we have two solutions which you can offer from day work. One is that edge sealant. At the edges, we can give you a uh, liquid based product or little greasy product which if you apply at the edges that takes care of the corrosions in-house that is uh, during WIP and when you want to do the packing with stretch film it is fantastic idea but normal stretch film comes with 23 microns the VCI stretch film comes around 50 micron and it is having the VCI ironing effect so you can do stretch wrapping which is clean stretch wrapping either uh, generally it is done with coil master machine in machine grade with the machine grade uh, VCI and the VCI which Deva can offer, which at my understanding, it is uh, more than 400 to 700 uh, percent performance. And this VCI stretch film will give you a better coverage, mileage, and also takes care of your corrosion issues. Further, Thanks, any Jay. details on corrosions, you can definitely share with us. We can even dig and get in, get in depth and resolve your issues, sir. That's good. Thank you, JJ. Gary, that 
Uh, it's a good question. We'll certainly be in touch with some further some further comments there, some further options. Okay, thanks. One of the other questions which we did have um, prior to the session was, um, in the industry, there is also certain copper-based technology used in certain plastics. JJ, can you give us an answer? Is that the same as VCI? Is copper-based technology VCI technology, or is it different, or why is it different if it is different? It is different, uh, Gary. It is different because in case of copper-based technology, uh, they use the highly charged copper particles, Cu particles, and that gets bonded uh, onto the metal surface to give you a protection. Basically, copper-based uh, ICD technology can take care of the metal from the corrosive gases. It replaces the gases and does the bonding with the metal surface. This is one way of doing it, but uh, the disadvantage with copper-based product is you can have this kind of product only mainly with uh, especially with plastic type of materials. But as I was mentioning that there are a couple of applications I'll tell you, like I was mentioning earlier that if you have to protect a boiler tube inside, you can't insert a plastic cap there. If you have to, you know, protect a electronic gadgets or a electronic control panel inside, you need to put emitters. The application is different. Okay. Let's say you want to put, uh, preserve the internal engine surface, internal compressors, internal gearbox, internal. The intricacies where you have a lot of cavities and you know a lot of intricacies. So to preserve these kind of applications, you don't have so many answers. So to say that uh, VCI has got a got a very vast applications, and you know it can give you a complete comprehensive solutions packaging solutions. So if you if you want me to explain in one sentence, a VCI is an umbrella. Copper based technologies can be a one stick of the umbrella. It's, that is the difference that you can say. That's fantastic. So what you're saying is BCI is far more broad reaching and it's able to be, you might say, impregnated into multiple types of materials, whether it's the outer, whether it's a desiccant, whether it's an oil, far more, far more broad in its, in its reach and its applications. That's, that's very good. We have another question chatted in here. How long would a reusable PVC zip up cover last with VCI? So I'll just, Sharp to the screen again, this cover here. Um, if you give me a second, I'll just open it up. So I have a big, a big cover here. Now this is one of our US based VCI products. Um, it's a very good question. The actual VCI technology or the VCI impregnation in those layers will outlast the actual material cover. Now this, this PVC cover is somewhere in that three to five year lifespan. It is actually used extensively in the US Navy. So it is a very, you might say able to withstand extremely harsh environments. Um, it is a, a reusable, so you can zip it, you can sew it, etc. but it has the VCI impregnated. So it, it is in that bracket, let's say in broad terms between three and five years of external Obviously, that might be also used sometimes undercover and then it will go up multi years, multiple years. Very good question. There was one other quick question I think that came through also before the session as to JJ, could you just give a, a one or two lines as to what is MVTR and what is WVTR? We sometimes hear about that as far as where plastics or certain products allow moisture through. Can you explain what that is? WVTR is water vapor transmission rate and moisture um, MBTR is moisture vapor transmission rate. Okay. In this case, moisture and water is moisture can become water after condensation. But till such time it is moisture, we call it moisture. So that is the difference, basic difference between WVTR and MBTR. But uh, to tell you that, a simplest example is if you take a normal LDP plastic film, normal plastic film bag, if you take a plastic cover, okay, and tie it up and put it, it's a dry bag, and put it inside the refrigerator for about 48 hours. After 48 hours, you'll see that lot of water accumulation inside the plastic bag, okay? This water, uh, whatever is accumulated, it is not because of the moisture which was already entrapped inside the enclosure, got condensed and given you so much of water. It is because the moisture can transgress through LDP, and that's how you have got so much of water inside. So that is the phenomenon with LDP bags generally to understand the severity of WVTR and MVTR. 
so it's it's like the ldp the low density polyethylene granules or most of the pe polyethylene granules will transgress the moisture from outside to inside that's thank you very much that's excellent jj conscious of time we've got another question that's come through i get corrosion in fuel tanks when out of service what would i use so it's a really good question we have a lot of a lot fed back to us where there's fuel tanks or sumps or something that is some enclosure and it's not being used like there's there's layoffs there's mothballing what would i use jj what do we answer there what's the best answer there see uh, i would uh, recommend here there are two aspects if the fuel tank is already filled with fuel then uh, we already have got the additive vci additive that can be directly added directly add to the fuel or oil uh, and then it takes care of the whole thing and later on when you drain out the oil or the fuel and then the tank is empty this vci forms a monomolecular layer because of the migrating factor it forms a monomolecular layer in the internal surface and gives further protections because in the engine you see or the compressor or most of these cases it is sealed it's a perfect enclosure so this vci stands and keep giving you protection for a very long long time that's how it is but we need to decide the additive percentages generally this uh, vci engine oil based additive you can add it right from 0.5% to 2.5% 2.5% depending on the protection duration of protection you need or depending on the big tank and the kind of surface area that is there that's what our engineer engineers are day in day out they're doing that kind of things to calculate the dosage thank you very much jj well conscious that we've virtually hit our 430 mark we're just going to run through the last slide, which is really just, you might say, a wrap up or in summary, what is the process? And Daywalk's holistic approach to preservation includes that end to end. So it's the study, you might say it's that if you could do it by means of an audit, and that's often done these days screen to screen, as opposed to on site, we, we're conscious that it's hard to get to sites, but it's the corrosion study and actually identifying what those challenges are. So what is the status? And then we work collaboratively with with guys and girls and your teams where there's that suggested system. So here are the options to get where we need to go. Then there's the supply of the materials and in turn the application, and that could be an instruction and applying of. And then finally, there's the training and ongoing support. So as far as next steps go, there might be further questions that, that come up. Please be free to email sales at Daywalk. Um, we will send out a recording to all attendees. And if there are any further questions or any specific needs from a product or technical, you might say a challenge or helping with a challenge, please reach out to the team. We'd love to hear from you. Thank you for attending today. And we look forward to interacting with the team in the future. Thank Good you, night. Gary, for making me a part of the team. Thank you so much Thank for, you, for a lot Thank of you, learning. Everybody. A lot of learning. Thank you.